that to defeat open C or slaughter, especially what I focus on is this one, defy find a way. Then from that perspective, Rook Slayer has running a much more advanced model on the NFT marketplace business. So this is a reference for you guys. So this is my full strategy. So I only work in assets in Bitcoin and I own the Oracle coin which related to these seven categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my full strategy, please check out my other video about my full strategy. And here's my video link, okay? The today's match item, matching category here. Number one, B2C taps. Then they're gonna provide an NFT marketplace. So number four, DEX is also in your matching category too, okay? Then, as usual, I'm gonna buy the six Anaka points to stand for the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. Then, for each, I set the 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30.30. Then, if you wanna deepen your understanding about my how I'm gonna analyze each point here, please check out my video about my altcoin investment strategy. And here's my video link, okay? Then, this is the total score of the Magic Eden as of now 25.5 points. Then my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm gonna recommend investment in much added tokens. Then from here, I'm gonna tell you the reasons, yeah? Then let's start here, pain point analysis. Then here is mainly two pain points. And the first one, this one. NFTs are rapidly growing these days and will play a critical role on blockchain matters. Then first of all, what I want you to understand here is NFT market is faster than growing right now. So for example, total sales volume size in a daily basis on November 14, 2020 is 141K. That's it. Then almost exactly one year later, 2021, November 14th, daily sales volume size is 133 million. Within just one year, 943X. It's amazing growth. Then active user base also rapidly growing too. Mini buyer on November 14, 2020 is 903. Then exactly one year later, unique buyer size over 61K. So 68X within just one year. Huge market growth, right? But the here is key point, what I want you to understand here. So we have to think about the blockchain metaverse. Because you know, metaverse is an entire macro market trend on the internet space. We have made it two directions for this in the metaverse economy: centralized versions and decentralized versions. Okay, central versions, of course, controlled by these tech giants such as Facebook, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. But we want to realize for the metaverse economy here is the decentralized versions. No centralized entity to control this new Web 3.0 world. Then of course, blockchain is the best technology to apply to realize this Web 3.0 world. Then why we need these decentralized model here? One of the great reasons for us is this one, privacy control issue. For example, Facebook, they're gonna make tons of money on a Web 2.0 world by using their centralized internet infrastructure, right? They gotta use our privacy data to make money on our advertising business. So of course, in a metaverse economy, they gotta do the same things too. That is why if you wanna avoid such tragedy here, we have to build decentralized metaverse by using blockchain technology. Now I'm gonna set up the five major key categories to think about the future of the metaverse. Game, social, shopping, finance, work. Then to compete with centralized metaverse, Here's a critical competitive edge for the blockchain industry to compete with Web 2.0 world, you know, tech giant metaverse economy is NFT. Then think about the variety of use case or also high potential NFT. Those four major categories on this metaverse, game, social, finance, shopping, all the time which is related to NFT for its potential. That is why I'm going to so seriously focus on blockchain-based NFT marketplace. Okay? 
Then pay point number two. OpenSea goes to the IPO. There's no leading decentralized NFT marketplace anymore on the blockchain space. So here's the key facts. OpenSea will go IPO by foreign Coinbase. But why? Right? For those retail investors who don't know anything about those kind of tech stuff world, probably these key news doesn't mean anything for you. But the like tech entrepreneur like me, it's crystal clear for us that to think about based on these two key news, OpenSea must go to the IPO. First one, long time lift CFO deposits to become CFO at NFT marketplace OpenSea. This is a golden hiding rule for those tech startups going to the IPO. Because you know, this guy have experience with the IPO on Lyft. So he knows how to do the IPO stuff, right? So usually tech startups who are planning to go to the IPO, they gotta hire those CFO who already have experiences for the you know, tech startups IPO. It's a golden rule. The second one, NFT marketplace OpenSea rises 300 million in the 3C funding round with a variation of 13.3 billion. This is also another key fact. Why? Because usually every single tech startups before they are going to IPO, they're gonna raise huge amount of money for their promotions after the IPO to maintain that their stock price keep higher level. So once we're gonna see these key news, actually almost at the same time here, like December 7th, January 5th here, this is a critical signal that OpenSea goes to the IPO. It's pretty sure. That's why OpenSea used to be here, but this they're gonna decide to go to the IPO. So they tend to be a social enemy for the blockchain metaverse. Which is also actually tell us that here is a big white space for the decentralized NFT marketplace. So from that perspective, we have to see the potential of the mask end. Okay. Then number two, proc analysis. So here's you know brief overview of the UI. Then it looks like you know Magic NN functional like portal site for the Solana ecosystem. Because you know, once we can look at the Z's category here, they were not purely functional like NFT marketplace. But also like for example, once you're gonna go to NN game category here, they're gonna kill like you know, newly released game on the NFT Solana ecosystem. Of course, you know, each game is an NFT game, right? Then once we're gonna look at the launch part here, also they're gonna provide a newly sales release model on every single new NFT brand or Solana. This is also another uniqueness compared with OpenSea. Then auction two. So for those in the premium NFT, they're gonna launch auction deal for each. So, you know, as you can see here, their product most like, you know, curation platform for the Solana ecosystem. Then additionally, one key thing, what I want you to understand here that Cognitive Edge of the Solana as L1 burst project is gas for speed. It's extremely cheaper than Ethereum. Then why that's so cheap? Because, you know, founding member of Solana invented to say, 20,000 transactions for one block. Ethereum, for example, only 70 transactions per block. That is why usually one block size, directly connect to the each transaction gas fee on their platform here. That's why Solana can achieve these in a pretty cheap gas fee model here. Then also, this is pretty good for the NFT marketplace business because compared with fungible token, like Throw tokens or BAT tokens or Uniswap tokens. NFT unique price for the each NFT is much smaller than fungible token transactions. Because you have to trade NFT one by one. Right? So from this perspective, it's also a great fit for a Solana ecosystem that Magic NM starting their business on Solana. Okay? Then based on this understanding, this is the value corporation analysis of the Magic Eden. Then, of course, their direct competitor is OpenSea, currently running on ETH, SOL, and Polygon. And then Rookslayer, currently running on ETH and the SOL, running on ETH and BNB and JAM. This is an NFT marketplace aggregator, running on ETH. 
then magic area and currently running on Sol only. Then since OpenSea, they're kind of moving into Solana 2, so currently they're going to start, you know, harsh competition here. Then to defeat OpenSea on Solana, especially what I focus on is this one, DeFi finally. Then from that perspective, Rook Slayer has running a much more advanced model on the NFT marketplace business. So this is a reference for you guys. So DeFi strategy positioning on Rooks as of April 2022. You know, from this perspective, OpenSea has nothing. But here, Rooks Slayer. First of all, so they got around 100% revenue share program for Rooks Staker on this platform. So those retail investor or contributor or co-member, co-founder of the Rooks Slayer, they got a stake their Luke's token on this platform, they can receive WEs and Luke's for the revenue share. Then these WEs coming from their marketplace revenue. This means their WEs revenue goes up, Luke's staker can receive much higher stats on this platform here. Then currently they can achieve 130% APR. It's amazing strong stats here. Then also recently they're gonna release compounding works. So those you know staking real the model, these you know WEs look staker, then this WEs directly compounded to Rook staking. That's why they're gonna achieve much higher APY than this model here. Currently they're gonna achieve 200 percent Then also they're gonna additionally provide Rook's trading rewards. So those NFT holder, they're gonna trade the NFT on Rooks Player. Every 24 hours, you can receive Rooks incentive too. About transaction fee, they gotta all the time set 20% discount that OpenSea transaction fee. That's Rooks Player how they're gonna compete with OpenSea on the Ethereum platform. From the Magic Eden perspective, I do think that they need this kind of DeFi feature to defeat OpenSea. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? Then number three, team analysis. Then here's key member, Jack, co-founder CEO, ex-partnership and a co-dev at FTX. Then since FTX and Slanner has pretty good close relationship to each other, so that is why I think Jack started this project from FTX, right? Then before that, he also the ex-product manager at Google. Then also he was ex-consultant at BCC. Then he got the BA of Commerce and Law at Monash University. Then Choshan, co-founder, ex-senior product manager at Coinbase. Then also the ex-head of strategy and business operation at DYDX. Third guy, Sidney, co-founder and CTO, ex-engine manager at Facebook. Then also he's ex-engine manager at Uber. Then he got the master degree with computer science at the Georgia Institute then he got the master degree of the computer science at the Georgia Tech. Then also George Yang, co-founder and the chief engineer, ex staff engineer at the Facebook. Also he's an ex software engineer at the Uber. Then he got the PhD of the computer science at the George Washington University. Henry, he's a growth lead. Then before joining Magic Eden, he was a co-founder of Apro YC Batch 2020. It's a great fraction as a serial tech entrepreneur. Also he's an ex product engineering at the Airbnb. Then he got the BS of computer science at Harvard University. Then plus 16 members, many in Australia and USA. Simply say, from product and a technical perspective, it's great, talented, and a very balanced team. It's amazing. Then number four, execution power analysis. Here's like marketplace data from that letter, top 15s. Magic Edit ranks in number two next to OpenSea. It's amazing. Then the arrival, Jam, for example, top fifths as NFT marketplace aggregator, also looks there, top 14th. Okay? Then once we're going to compare OpenSea and Magic Eden, for example, active user base is OpenSea is around 160k. Then Magic Eden around like 100k. Right? Then OpenSea, their volume size is around 600 million within seven days, one week. Magic Eden is around 200 million. So simply say it's amazing traction. It's great. Then because of this, you know, 
huge success of Magic Eden as a decentralized NFT marketplace. Swanner ranking top two, number two, next to Ethereum on their NFT tractions. It's great. But the ones that we're gonna look at the stats here, still 10 times difference here compared with Ethereum. Because then once you look at the top 15 ranking here, as you can see, most of the you know, NFT brand originally coming from Ethereum platform. This is how the Ethereum platform is so powerful, which means OpenSea is so powerful enemy for the Magic Eden 2. Okay? The next one, here's key news updates about their fundraising. So, March 14th, 2022, Solana based NFT marketplace Magic Eden rises 27 million in their series A round. It's great. Then, the product that this round also Sequoia Capital, Solar Ventures, Greylock, and Electric Capital. It's pretty good venture capital too. It's great. Then, number five, token economy analysis. So here is token economy design mentor Shu Chen and a major matching category for the match area is number one DAPS. Also, they gotta provide a marketplace. So another in the matching category, DEX. Okay. Then here's the network effect for the match area. It's pretty similar for the you know OpenSea, also like an Amazon model. So starting for this one. So active user traffic growth coming from this one. Brand partner wants to sell their digital collectibles NFT on Magic Eden. Then selection of NFTs goes up, better customer experiences, so active user traffic is going up. This is, you know, marketplace close. The second, this, you know, green growth file is pretty important for them, especially to compete with OpenSea. Because staking DeFi, which as I told you on a, you know, looks layer case, it's pretty important for them. Also, treasury management for investment in NFT creator or, you know, NFT game, which also accelerate much more, you know, original NFT coming to the marketplace. So this is also pretty important. Then less supply for the static letter on the exchange, their tokens, that is why stable value asset growth on their, you know, token itself. So they can achieve lower marketplace fee because they don't need to charge money for their marketplace transactions to compete with OpenSea. So Loop Flare, exactly what they're doing right now, is, it's a great example, right? So they're gonna achieve the better customer experiences. So this is, I think, one of the ideal network effects for the Magic Eden 2, okay? Then next one, benchmark analysis. So, currently Magic Eden doesn't have any kind of market cap because they have not issued a token yet. Then for their rival, OpenSea, for example, 13 billion. Then Lootflayer, for example, 355 million. Then Amazon or micro creations, their e-commerce marketplace, their value is 600 billion. So, First of all, they need to compete with OpenSea at that level. So that's their first missions. Now, of course, you know, DAO, Stake and DeFi, NFT games will be the key point for them, okay? Then about governance DAO, as we know, they have not issued a token yet. So instead, they're gonna apply kind of a little unique approach because they're also running their own DAO ecosystem. Then if you wanna join the DAO or the Magic Era, you have to buy DAO tickets then which is available on their marketplace. So this is a magic tickets. So it looks like their DAO also proactively function right now. I think it's good. But of course, once they're gonna issue their own tokens, they're gonna switch this DAO ticket to their own token to join this DAO ecosystem, okay? Then number six, hype cycle analysis. So as usual, got the hype cycle analysis, brought in the two twenty one versions and a major match recovery for the magic NA starting from the DAPS, non-fungible token, NFT, decentralized web, DeFi. Especially to compete with OpenSea, DeFi play a critical role here. But still, they don't have any kind of you know, token economics and also DeFi feature. That is why it's currently in direct match recovery. Okay? Then additional item. So Gartner Hypecycle has not support Metaverse yet, but which is also it's put a critical role here to think about the future of NFT marketplace. Because as I told you in the previous slide, NFT is the greatest cutting edge point for the blockchain metaverse to compete with centralized metaverse. That's why. Then it's also great, you know, strong market momentum for Magic Eden 2. Okay. Then total swap dates. So about pain point without any questions, 5.0, because decentralized NFT marketplace 
It's a critical demand to compete with centralized metaverse. That's why 5.0. Product 4.0. So Magic and then just like a portal site for the Solana ecosystem. This is great. But they don't have any kind of token economy or so DeFi feature yet compared with Luke's player. To compete with an open sea, this is kind of Monday item. So currently I set the 4.0 here. Okay. Team level 4.5. It's pretty well balanced team, product and the engineering side. Also, you know, pretty you know, right background to run this NFT marketplace. So 4.5. Execution power 4.5. Simply say, market momentum of Slanner from the NFT business perspective, all the time led by Magic Edit. They're great tractions because they already run in a number two player next to OpenSea on the NFT marketplace. That's why I said the 4.5. Token economy 3.0. But well, simply say, they don't have any token yet. They don't have any kind of DeFi feature yet. But you know, OpenSea already getting into the Solana ecosystem. Then to compete with them, I think this can be a Monday item for them. So from this perspective, I said the 3.0 here. Then hype cycle 4.5. Especially Metaverse. It's a great market momentum. Combination with NFT, that's why I set the 4.5 here. So total score is 25.5 points. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm gonna recommend investment in much edit tokens. Then if you are interested in much more detailed information about my portfolio allocations and also my real time buying and selling action for every single crypto assets, including ICO, ID of DeFi, please think about to join my premium membership program, real time buying and selling signal. The major purpose of this membership program to help to reach your crypto asset performance to my level here. The for more detail, please check out my other video. And here's my video link, okay? All right, so that is all this time. So I'm gonna make this video for educational purpose. So I'm not gonna guarantee you any kind of certain investment outcome with this video or any video that I make. But I truly hope that my video will probably help you guys understand about high potential about crypto and motor space. So I'm gonna make a lot of this video of crypto and motor space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.